to another edition of Cabin Crafts. I'm here with my very good friend, Mr. Ron Rayfield. Hi, everybody. He, he's been generous enough to offer to film this video for me, and he's actually going to be in it with me, too. Um, some of you may not know this, but Ron actually sews a lot of his own costumes or, or you know, <laughs> outfits that he wears. He's always over here... Um, what do you call that? Adjusting it, um, altering it. He's oh. always over here altering his stuff. I guess you can call it that. <laughs> yeah, you're altering your stuff. It's like, okay, I need to make this 1790s coat go up to 1820s. So he's cutting things off and sewing things back on. And it's just, so men were tailors back then. So, you know, don't think Ron's a wuss or anything. I'm not a tailor, though. No, he's not a tailor, but he does a pretty good job. I, I'm at the Halloween costume level of tailoring. Yeah, you, yeah. But, well, I say it's a little above the Halloween level, you know. <laughs> well, Th those are pretty, pretty raunchy looking. Um, but anyway, we're going to talk about something today called penny rugs. And I'm sure if you are in the <laughs> colonial prim decor uh, trend, I guess you could say, but it's not a trend because it's always in style. Um, well, there's a ladybug on one. Of... There we go. Um, this is a penny rug. This one is handmade by a lady in my town. It's all done in shades of gray. And so these date from about the Civil War era. So people, it's in a lot of colonial prim homes as traditional decor in colonial homes. And I guess the reason is it just fits really well with colonial decor, but it's actually not a colonial craft. It is a Civil War craft. And it's called penny rugs because these circles, they used a big penny as their template to cut the circles. And so pennies during the Civil War were huge. Interesting. Yeah, they were like they were like bigger than a 50 cent piece that we have nowadays. Wow. They were really big and they were real copper, not like our funny money today. Now see, I why I this is why I think it's colonial and inspired it because it looks like cockades on the tricorn hat it kind of does it, instead of a, a, a large penny to yeah. me it looks like a, a cockade yeah so maybe but, that's why everybody thinks it's associated with that. i don't know but well i guess because it's a handcraft folk it art. would go with any yeah folk art it would go with any time period so i've got a bunch of samples here today but one of the fun things about this is i've read two different histories one said that they put them on, they were, you know, heavy duty. They were always made out of wool, for one thing. Always wool. And people had a lot of wool scraps back then. You you had holes in your blankets or whatever. Or you, and I, maybe because of the Civil War, men coming home, they had all those wool uniforms, those wool blankets. Right. So they had a lot of wool, and the women would <clears throat> make do with scraps, whatever, you know. So they started making these penny rugs, and they even said that sometimes they would sew a penny in between uh, the top and bottom to weight this down. So these were runners. They were runners. Table, they were table mats. Table mats, mantle covers. Um, one place said that they put them on the floor. I really don't think hmm. that they would put these on the floor after putting all that much right. hand sewn. Maybe work on into the back it. of a, a chair. Yeah. Up where the headrest is. Yeah, like a doily, like we put a doily sometimes. Yeah. But um, this one is has got teardrop shapes so this one is a handmade one for gray it's actually really pretty it is they used all the different shades it's of gray. just all different gray yep and, and these, then, are, these are for purchase by the way here in candy's store yeah they're not on the internet because they're one of a piece they're items. one of a kind yeah so you have to come in and this is another lady she is uh obviously in the early american life directory of crafts and see you can see now what's that supposed to be this is a basket a basket okay. with berries and a little bird and then the pennies going all around very nice. Look at the back. She's used an old blanket. Neat. So you can applique, you know, scenes on these. This is a, a more of a traditional penny rug made by the same lady. I like that one. Very patriotic. Looking. Yeah, this is Suzette Crummel is her name. And it, it just looks like a cockade on a hat. Yeah, it does. It really does, actually, now that you said that. I never thought that before until you said that. This one is one that's for sale in my shop. Now, this that's is pretty. this is an import. And it's imported from India. And so this one would be a table runner. And these little flaps on the end are called tongues hmm. for obvious reasons. So, and then I also, I've heard them called pen wipers. So that like when people were writing, they could wipe the nib of their pen off on there. Which again, I really don't think people would 
wipe their pen. If you went to all the trouble right. to sew all of these little circles and things on here, I really wouldn't be wiping my ink on my... Mm -hmm. So I, I, th I don't think that's accurate. So, you know, there's all kinds of stuff out there on the internet that's Oh, yes. Yeah. There's lots of myths and lots of pop culture. And, right. And it's usually way different from what actually happened, what is actually fact. And I've right. learned that over the last few years, and it, it's fascinating. Right. Well, if you just think practically, would you spend hour upon hour sewing all of that and then wipe black ink on it? Nope. Would you scuff your boots <laughs> on that? Nope. I don't think so either. So... Practically speaking, I think that these were strictly decor. I think they were, you know, a way to utilize scraps, you know, decorate your home, you right. know, maybe cover your mantle, cover your table, put a mat down for a candle. So now we get to some of the projects that I've made. And these are really simple. This is coasters. Nice. These are just large pennies, basically, large circles. And so I've made a set of coasters. This is a candle mat. You can see it's shaped like a star. And then I did some fancy stitch work in the middle. And I'm going to show you at, at the end of this video how to do this blanket stitch. This is called a blanket stitch. It's very, very easy to do. It's also a buttonhole stitch. So yesterday, Ron was in the shop wanting to adjust a jacket, and now I can show him how to do a hand sewn <laughs> buttonhole stitch. Because oh it's the same as this, only it's a lot finer. It's the same stitch. It's a pretty stitch. It is a pretty stitch. It, it almost uh, outlines it. It does. And uh, now it, this is this look. is one of my penny mats that I made for my house. As you can see, it's see through, and all I did was I like that. Yeah, all I did was uh, attach on the underneath side. I just tacked all those little circles together and made a really nice mat. I, I like that. that it's see through. Yeah. More than a, a solid. That's really cool. Yeah. And this kind of re also reminds me of yo-yo quilts. Have you seen yo-yo quilts? I have not. Yo-yo quilts are, are little circles that of little puffy circles that they just join them together and you can see through it. It's almost lacy huh. looking. It's really pretty. Wow. Um, here's a pillow that I'm working on for the fall. So these can be made into three-dimensional objects like a pillow. Then, yeah, right? so this okay. is a pillow. So this is a, a pumpkin pillow with a crow on it, and there's the back, and this will all get stitched together and stuffed. Very so, nice. I yeah. think Justine might have to have that one. Yeah, this is cute. And this is this is definitely early American folk art. I mean, you would see these kind of birds on like fracture paintings and, and things like that. So um, this is a folk art pillow. This one's really cute. This is another pumpkin pillow with a little squirrel on it. She might like that one better. She might. She likes little animals. Yes. <laughs> really, really likes little animals. And so this is a little... And you can see I've, I've pinned all of my pieces down so that I can attach them and then I've got a different color back and this will get stuff so it's not going to be like really fluffy it'll be kind of a, a flat pillow. right it's just for decoration it's just not for, for just a, right you just <laughs> throw it on you know up against so anywhere where you want a little decorative pillow in a chair or whatever very nice so that is all of our different um penny rugs I do have the imported ones on the website um the ones that are made in India and uh don't be hating on India um it's not from China uh, the company that makes these, I know the owners, this is all sustainably done. This is all done by women in India that um, do it for income. It's not like child sweat labor. It's, it's in not China. a sweat shop. No. Um, and it's all, they do all um, colonial primitive decor. They make rugs and all sorts of stuff. Really cute things that they make. So anyway, those are, uh, the imported ones are on the website. The single individual ones, like I said, they're one of a kind. And so I can't put them on the website. But now I'm going to show you just how to do that basic blanket stitch. And all I have is embroidery thread. This is embroidery floss. And you like to do like a contrasting color so you can see those, right. those pretty stitches. So Now you could use any color, right? Yeah. Like depending on what your material color, you could use white thread yeah. or red thread. I mean, thread. you can see that throughout it's mostly done in black. Right. But like on this one. That's a pink in it. Yeah, this is like a mauve rosy color. She's she's used coordinating colors with her. She doesn't have any black on that whatsoever. It gives it a really delicate right. Black yeah. would would really darken it and yeah. not look as pretty yeah. and uh, you know Valentine-ish. So she's used really light embroidery floss colors on this pretty little bird basket. Mm -hmm. um, so you can use whatever color floss you like. Traditional is black. 
Right. Um, because it, it just you want because they were showing off their stitching skills. Right. And they wanted people to see right. that. So. Okay. So I've already um, sewn two pieces of this mustard felt together. This mustard colored felt. So there's that's actually two circles, and we're going to center the blue on here and I'm just going to anchor it down with a little pin and I've already got my embroidery thread this is three strands of embroidery floss so usually six strands come on a skein so this is three and I'm going to I've already got a knot in my little end there and I'm actually going to go just under the surface here and come up so that that knot is hidden you'll see it's going to go underneath the, the blue Let's get him tucked under there. There we go. Okay, so here's our starting point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up and go to the edge of the blue with my needle. And we're going to leave this. We're coming up through the middle of this thread, actually, and you'll see why. So when you pull this up, there's your first stitch. Now you're going to move over and do another stitch. You want to try to keep them even. And again, we're coming up through the middle of that big piece of thread there. And you'll see why. It, it goes to the outside. And it goes around. So you can see the edge of the mustard one here. And you just keep going around. Come to the edge of your blue. Now, you can do it this way. Here's another way to do it. Get all your thread out of the way. And then go through that once you get closer to it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Then, but I'm just going straight up. I'm just leaving my string hanging loose. And you're literally wrapping that outside thread around. And this is how you would do a buttonhole, too. It really doesn't look that hard. It's not hard. It's a very easy stitch. I mean, little, little girls could do this when they were first learning how to sew. They could sew pennies. This would be an easy thing to teach little girls a basic stitch like this. And this is just going to secure it down. All the way around. And like I said, you can get the wool felt. This is wool felt, 100% wool felt. Um, but, you know, you can go to Hobby Lobby and get squares of felt, like 8 by 10 squares. They're like the, the size of a sheet of paper. Mm -hmm. I think they're like 30 cents. And and that's good enough to uh, to start with if you want to practice and you don't want to spend a lot of money on, on real wool felt. Um, go and get... Uh, just the squares of acrylic. It's probably acrylic felt. So the thicker in the material, the better, right? So the so the string stays around the outside yeah. It, of it it gives it it gives it structure, but the but the acrylic felt from from the store is is pretty thick too. Um, it's just if you really want to be traditional, you would use wool felt because that's what they were using. They were they had a lot of wool. Most of your textiles back in early America from the colonial period and before and on was either linen, which is made from flax, cotton, or wool. You didn't have these artificial um, textiles like, you know, nylon and polyester and stuff like that. So we're almost to the last stitch, and I wanted to show you the last stitch. So the last stitch is we're just going to come up here and... And then you want to just go back into your, under that other first stitch there to finish it off. And I'm just going to do a little knot and then I'll cut it as close as I can to the, I didn't bring my scissors with me, but you get the idea. 
So then I would just clip that as close as I could. So there's your penny. So this is actually three layers of felt. So the first two are the same color. Or you could do three layers of three different colors. So like you could even put another little penny on the top of that one. And then just do uh, simple stitches to adhere that on. You can hang these as Christmas ornaments from your little primitive Christmas tree. If you wanted to put a blue circle on the back too so that when it twirls around it looks the same. Um, you could do three graduated pennies together in all white and make a snowman. Um, I mean, the possibilities with this are endless. And this stitch, like I showed you on the other pieces, you can applique birds down. You can applique flowers, hearts. Uh, it's a lot of fun to do. It's a very simple stitch. It's a very reasonable craft. I mean, uh, embroidery floss is still cheap. Um, you can start with acrylic uh, felt. No one will know the difference other than you, really. Um, and I hope you practice and, and make some of these and then stitch them together. Send me pictures. Make a candle mat. Um, whatever you want to do is you start small. Uh, there was another little bitty candle mat in here. Where did it go? There it is on the bottom. This is a little handmade candle mat from the lady that uh, lives in my town. You can see it's not very big. She did do three little pennies on a black background with a star. So this one actually has a lot of handwork in it for something so small. But you can start out very simply, make a little hexagon mat for your candle. Um, and as you get more uh, skilled with it, you can make bigger things. It's just a lot of fun, very relaxing to do. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed our penny rug tutorial and I uh, hope you try to make one. Um, you can uh, get the supplies at any craft store, uh, wool felt or regular felt. Um, so just thank you very much for yep. watching. Thanks, guys. Bye.